Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Secure TV. Uh, so previous week we talked about like, you know, what are the client side filters and we talked about some of the history, uh, uh, etc. And now today I'm going to show you some of the rules. The We are going to actually use the DLL which are used by the access filter. We are going to decompile it. We're going to examine and we can see what are the rules that it uses to prevent cross site scripting kind of attacks. So once we learn that, based on that, we can determine how do we bypass that, right? So uh, the first, uh, if you go back in the history, right, the first attempt in blocking the malicious request natively, that is like, you know, indeed in the browser was made by Internet Explorer and Microsoft, of course, and they called it as an access filter, uh, which we are seeing here, like, you know, kind of a brief uh, logic on how it typically works. So what it does is uh, it's again using the regular expression. Uh, and as I said in the previous week, if you haven't learned the regular expression, do so. It's going to be very, very critical in the security, uh, like, you know, security profile. Uh, so what it does is, so first off, let's say browser sends a request to the web server and then the web server sends the response back. There is a layer uh, here uh, within the IE or browser edge that uses the access filter logic and they have a bunch of regular expression and based on that it determines whether that's a malicious response or not if it is then it instead of like you know blocking those it actually transform into the safe response and give it back don't worry if you don't understand we, we are going to see some examples later in the video but that's like you know that's the how typical process works uh, browser sends a request gets a response there is in between access filter logic it's like you know uh, inter interceptor which examines and change the response before it is uh, reflected onto the browser uh, onto the browser and the user screen so these are some of the uh, access filter rules uh, which i've extracted from the ie 11 uh, now usually you will find these uh, rules in the uh, in your system 32 folder uh, i think the name of the file is mshtml.dll so once you uh, use the DLL, there is a there, there are various ways to decompile. You can also use the decompiling software. Uh, you can actually use the Visual Studio, which I did, uh, to decompile it. So so there are various ways you can actually decompile and recompile. I would not advise that because it might break your browser if you are not very much familiar. But I didn't want to like you know I just did that uh, job uh, before uh, before recording this so we can be quick enough. But yeah, these are some of the rules. Uh, which you can see and these are mostly based on regular expression right so this one for example is looking at the embed uh, this one is looking at like you know some malicious character maybe script there is a t character and it's gonna uh, change it with like you know in the parenthesis uh, with o or hash this is for the iframe this is for the form tag script tag base and meta so there are, there are several several uh, hundreds of uh, filters like this in the uh, in the uh, access filter logic now uh, which are usually used to uh, construct and, and analyze the response so as a kid we we used to get like you know a one paragraph of uh, full of sentences and we have to find a word from that maybe it's diagonal uh, like in a standing line uh, slipping line and stuff like that uh, so that's the same way we are going to examine this filter now if you closely look at this at uh, the entire filter I've obviously marked this red letters I'll, I'll explain why I have this right but first off if you see starting from this character J and then there's a A V A S C R I P T so this filter actually examines the javascript uh, response from the browser that is the exactly what it does and this red day uh, red uh, letters what it does is it 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 uses to naturalize the response so suppose in the javascript you have some malicious character what it does is it actually neutralizes so it doesn't reflect so i'll also show you some example later on but ultimately the goal is if you have script alerts uh, script in the response then it neutralizes maybe alert and then it doesn't uh, like you know harm uh, make harmful to the user or maybe it transfers the script tag so that's the main goal of this uh, marked characters let's examine one more so if you see here the same way this is used for the vb script so v b s c r i p and t so this is uh, in the diagonal this entire thing is for the vb script 
So that's how uh, uh, the IE analyzes whether uh, this these are the like you know uh, valid response or not. Now, if we see this example, and when I say naturalizing the the response, what it does is let's say you have alert one. It like you know identifies oh in this one uh, we probably need to naturalize so user do not get reflected XSS kind of thing so it replaces with the hash. So that's how uh, like typically this this uh, filters works and and that's the approach that IE team decided that you know we do not want to uh, we do not want to uh, compromise the usability uh, for the uh, for the users who are using the IE browser so this is a trade off between the usability and the security so basically once a malicious uh, like you know injection is detected access filter modifies the evil part of it uh, in this example like alert and by adding the pound sign uh, it it neutralizes the character so that's that's the whole conclusion of how that filter is being used so this one if we see here uh, this is another filter uh, and this one like you know we saw earlier in the list of uh, different filters so let's say there is a payload uh, which was provided by the attacker which is svg on load is equal to alert one right this is very standard payload which we have seen many many times now the goal here is to replace this o with an hash sign which is again neutral character so that's when when the i filter receives this it converts this into the svg forward slash hash and load is equal to alert one. So this will not be actually executed at the user side. So one more uh, a, a filter we are going to examine. So this one is is index on mouse over is equal to alert one. Now if you see there are multiple uh, regular expressions which are used. So in this one is index. So as you can see, I will be replaced with the hash sign. And then here again on mouse, so O will be replaced with the hash sign uh, to make it non-reflected and that's how it will be given back to the user. So the XSS auditor, right? So we have been talking about the XSS filter, which is from the IE for specifically for the IE browser. Now XSS auditor is a built-in function of Chrome and Safari designated to mitigate cross-site scripting attacks. It aims to identify if query parameters contain malicious JavaScript and block the response if it believes the payloads were injected into the server response. So it does the exact same thing what IE filter uh, used to do. Now the only difference is this one is not on top of browser layer. Instead, access auditor is actually built into the engine, uh, browser engine, which is called like a Blink. So Blink is a browser engine developed as part of the Chromium project with contributors from Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Opera, Software, Adobe, Intel, IBM, Samsung, and others. It was first announced in April 2013. So this is how the access auditor works differently. So if you need to analyze uh, some of the rules which are being used in the Chrome and that's how that's why like you know you would see different behavior if you supply the same payload in the Chrome versus IE and and that's why like you know sometimes we have to verify in the different browser uh, for our attacks but that's the main reason so uh, we are we are going to like you know of course I'm going to show you some of the bypass as well like we, since we have studied all these rules now we are also going to see okay how do we actually bypass this filter based on our study because that's what our main intention is right uh, so but yeah that that I'll cover in the next uh, video uh, but hopefully you like this one uh, let me know if you have questions so far in any of this uh, content I want to take you step by step and make sure you understand every process before we jump into the actual attack part. Uh, so yeah, please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. Uh, if you have any questions put down in the comment section. Otherwise, I'll see you on next Monday. Bye